In this video, we will explore some of the concepts that were uh, explained in Chapter 3, and we will be trying to understand a little bit more about how the measurement of the reflection coefficient is actually carried out, and how it relates to uh, the voltage standard wave ratio VSWR. So first thing, we go to circuit schematic as usual. We open a new schematic and call it mismatched line. So let's refer now to the picture that we saw in the notes. We've got a transmission line of characteristic impedance Z0 with the propagation constant gamma and we've terminated this transmission line with a load impedance ZL because we assume that ZL and Z0 are not the same value there will be some uh, power reflected from the load back out towards the source so we'll have an, an incident voltage wave which is represented by this quantity here and also a reflected voltage wave which is represented by this other quantity here. So what we're going to try and do is measure the uh, reflection coefficient which is nothing but the ratio of the incident and reflected voltage um, at uh, this point here right across the terminals of the load and then we're going to repeat the same measurement at different points along the line. In the notes we chose conveniently uh, a, uh, an origin for our z-axis around here. This meant that the calculations were quite easy. However, we want to try and generalize this result and see what actually happens if we move away from the load along a transmission line, which may represent a true measurement scenario whereby the load is connected to our uh, measurement instrument through a certain length of transmission line. We need to learn what that does and understand how to work out what part of our result is due to our load and what part is due to the interconnecting elements between the measurement device and the load. So let us look at this picture in terms of voltages a little bit more. Obviously we'll have a load voltage down here and there will be an incident voltage which is produced from the source. And then, because we have a mismatch, a reflected voltage that comes back from this side of the circuit. So how do we go about doing this with microwave office? First of all, let's get ourselves a very simple, resistive, purely resistive load. So let's press Ctrl L, RES, that gets us a nice resistor, place it on the schematic and ground it. We'll give it a value of 25 ohms. Next on the agenda, we'll get ourselves a transmission line because we need to connect our load somehow to the source. So again, we press Ctrl L and get ourselves a transmission line in physical form. Place it in the schematic like so. Now we need a measurement component. For this particular type of measurement, what we need is a port, which is just up here. What this represents is actually a signal generator with a frequency which is established by the frequency we choose in the project options with an internal impedance of 50 ohms. Now, we'd like to measure the reflection coefficient. Let's first set our transmission line to a length of 0 millimeters. That means, effectively, that we are measuring right across at the load terminals. We can now go to graphs, new graph, choose a polar graph this time and call it reflection coefficient. Now right click on the graph, add a new measurement. Now you don't find a gamma measurement here and that is because to measure the reflection coefficient for a passive circuit at a specific port, we, we used something different called uh, S parameters. And in this case, we'll be using S11. So we'll be looking at port 1 
and getting the power that and uh, measuring the power that goes into port 1 and the power that comes back from port 1 and from this measurement we can actually work out the ratio of voltage um, reflective voltage and incident voltage. Now this measurement is exactly the same as the reflection coefficient for passive circuits. So in this case measuring S11 effectively means measuring gamma. Click apply and OK. And now we simulate. OK. So let's add a marker. Just press Ctrl M and then click on the point of interest. And then we can also change the way that the marker is displayed by right-clicking, going into Properties, Markers, and then choosing Magnitude and Angle, and Apply. OK. So as you can see, uh, we've got a magnitude of 0 0.33, so it's about a third, and an angle of 180 degrees. What happens if we start changing the length of the transmission line? thereby effectively taking ourselves at a different point along the line. At the moment we are measuring right here and we've obtained a reflection coefficient of a third in magnitude and 180 degrees in phase. And now as we move along the transmission line, so as we increase the length of the line, which at the moment is zero, we'll effectively be placing ourselves at some point along the line here. So go to the back to the schematic and click on the tune tool and then uh, on the length of the line. Now go back to the graphs, open the tuner and set a minimum length of zero and a maximum length of 150 millimeters. Now if we increase the length of the line you can see how we're going around in a circle with the same radius but obviously with different phases. So if we stop up here for instance you can see that we've got about 90 degrees in phase but the modulus is still the same. Similar thing if you carry on you can see that in as much as you change uh, the phase or the reflection coefficient the magnitude stays the same. Now this ties in very well with the fact that the VSWR, which is related to the uh, magnitude of the reflection coefficient, is not dependent on the length of the line. Let's just verify that. So, let's close the tuner for a moment. Go to Graphs, New Graph. This time choose a rectangular graph. Click on OK. Right click, add a new measurement and under the linear measurements, in this case pick VSWR. Click on apply and OK. Then we uh, just close everything apart from our two graphs. We can go to window and say tile vertical and this allows us to see the two graphs at the same time. So let's just simulate the circuit and then open the tuner again put it right in between these two and then let's start changing the length of the line yet again. You can see that the uh, reflection coefficient is changing in phase but the VSWR which is not related to the phase of the reflection coefficient but only to its modulus is not changing at all. And this is just what, just what we would expect. Now let's take things a, little, a step further. First of all we'll change our port here to something called a harmonic balance port. The difference in using a harmonic balance port is that it allows you to see the time waveform of voltages and current, which is something you can't do with the other port. This is because the harmonic balance port allows you to do nonlinear simulations, which you need to do if you want to see voltages and current in this fashion. So just press Ctrl L and type in port 1 and place it on the schematic where the other one was. You can see that it's not very different. You can set uh, the power level that you want out of your port. We then insert two other two measurement components here, a voltmeter and a current meter. So again control L V underscore meter for a voltmeter 
is placed on the schematic like so and ground it to give yourself a ground reference and then press Control L yet again and get yourself an I meter. These allow us to see voltages and currents at the input of our transmission line. Let's reset the transmission line length to zero and add a new graph, a rectangular graph this time, and we'll add a couple of measurements which are non-linear, a voltage in the time domain, V time, we must choose the measurement components uh, V meter, VM1, which is the voltmeter we've just inserted, and apply. And then we'll also get the current, which is again a nonlinear measurement, and it's I time that we're interested in, and it's already selected the right measurement component there, which is the M meter. Apply and OK. Now, voltage and current will have different units, and so it is advantageous to use two different axes for uh, the, the two of them. You can do that quite easily, you just right click on the graph, go to properties, and then to measurement. V time uh, is assigned to the left axis. The I time is also assigned to the left axis, so we just select right, so that now the uh, current measurement is going to be displayed on the right axis. Click apply and OK. Now as we did before, we want to see what's happening uh, to the uh, reflection coefficient at the same time as the uh, voltage. Just close all the tabs that we're not interested in and just leave the graphs that we want to display. And then go to Windows and select Tile Horizontal. So if we simulate, we can see what's going on. Now look at the uh, voltages and currents. Obviously we have to remember where we are now. We are right here. So if you're looking at the voltage here and the current, they have to be in phase because they are across a purely resistive termination. And we've seen that when you have a resistor, the voltage and currents are in phase. So because we've set a transmission line length to zero in micro office, and we've now been looking at the uh, voltage and current right at this point, and there is a resistive termination connected, then we must have them in phase. Now, what happens as we change the length of the line? Thereby effectively changing the point at which we measure the reflection coefficient, and also the voltage and current, of course. You can see that the voltage and current start going out of phase with one another, because in this case, what we're seeing is not only the resistive termination, but also part of the transmission line. We've seen how a transmission line may be seen as a network of inductors and capacitors. And hence, because there are these reactive elements which are present, since now we have a length of line, then what we're seeing at the measuring port is a combination of the effects of these capacitors and inductors as well as a purely resistive load. And that is why there is a phase shift between current and voltage. That's determined just by the fact that our transmission line is present in series with the load that we're trying to measure. Now, voltage and current, of course, are changing. They're changing in magnitude, and the relative phases are changing as well. So as we go ar around the refraction coefficient changes in phase, and also the relative phase of voltages and currents change, and their magnitudes too. However, there is one thing that no matter where we are, should not change, and that's the VSWR. The VSWR gives you a ratio of the maximum voltage over the minimum voltage. Observe the voltage waveform alone, which is the blue curve this time. We're trying to find the minimum amplitude and the maximum amplitude, and then we'll work out the ratio and see whether that ties in with the VSWR. So as we move along the line, so as we increase the length of the line that connects our signal generator to our load, the voltage increases, goes to a maximum, and then comes back to a minimum. And we can see that the minimum is right where we started, so when we had no transmission line at all. 
So if we insert a marker there, we can see that it's roughly 0.2, but let's get a better measurement. Select Add Marker, and then just click on the peak. It's about 0.21 volts. Now if we change uh, the length of our line, we'll get through a maximum, which is round about there. So looking at the voltage again uh, around there is 0.42. Now, uh, it doesn't take a great deal of skill to calculate the ratio of 0.42 over 0.21, and that turns out to be just 2, which is exactly what we measured before.